Good evening to everybody. It is Christmas Eve. We've been waiting for this and celebrating the season of Advent for the last four weeks. And here we are finally getting together to celebrate the birth of Christ. So welcome to our online service as we join together. Um, very light stuff in terms of announcements. We're really holding those off for Sunday. But the first announcement is about Sunday. Uh, we have a long-standing tradition of the Sunday after Christmas being Pajama Sunday. And so if you would like to wear pajamas on the Zoom meeting, well, you all do that anyway. So uh, feel free. And if anyone feels like you really want to, uh, to push the envelope and go for formal wear instead, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but Sunday is our service of lessons and carols. Uh, and, and we will have a, a great service. We have readings that many of you have submitted. We have music that many of you have submitted. And we will continue our celebration of Christmas. So those are the two announcements that I have about Sunday. The next one is just sort of a heads up announcement. We are scheduling our congregational meeting for the end of January. So that information will be shared on Sunday as well. But the date for that is January 23rd. So mark your calendars and that's going to be an online meeting, I should suspect. Um, so be ready for that. And the other thing is that after last year not having a confirmation class at all, we are looking to have a semester-long confirmation program starting on the 16th of January. So if you are interested in helping out with that, um, please let me know. Um, I am desperately in need of some backup with that. I'm happy to do it uh, as one of the major participants, but I need at least one or two other folks to help out. So if you're able to do that, let me know. And again, I will mention that again on Sunday. So those are the announcements for this evening. And we will begin our worship as we hear the introit. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. The grace of God has come to save us. For our sakes, God sent the child of Bethlehem. For our salvation, Jesus came to live among us. Let all people sing for joy and give thanks. Tell the world what God has done in our midst. God has called and chosen us to hear good news. God's marvelous works are new every morning. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth to all who please God. We seek to honor God in this time of worship. We want to see for ourselves what God has done. And our opening hymn this evening is Angels We Have Heard on High. Oh, 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 oh,
you to join me in the prayer of invocation. Out of deep shadows, we are attracted to your brightness, glorious God. From the trauma of life's battles, we are drawn to the peace you alone can provide. Away from our irreligion and worldly passions, you invite us to center our lives in you. Come, Holy One, to reign among us. Bring the joy we cannot know apart from you. Lead us in the ways of justice and righteousness that you intend. Establish among us your marvelous works that we might declare them to a waiting world. Amen. On this Christmas Eve, we are gathered as God's people to celebrate what Christ's coming means to the world. We join with Christians all over the world who are celebrating tonight. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6, expresses the joy that we know today. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Luke's Gospel tells the good news of Christ's birth, telling the story of how the shepherds trembled in fear of the angelic choir and how but the angels said to them do not be afraid for see i am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people glory to god in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors the apostle paul's letter to the romans speaks of the hope that we have saying hope does not disappoint us because god's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Tonight we relight the four Advent candles and recall what the good news means. Jesus Christ is the greatest gift who makes all those other gifts possible. We light the Christ candle now as we think about what Christ's coming means to each one of us.
let us pray. We thank you, God, for your gift of Jesus Christ to the entire world. We thank you that Christ's coming makes hope, peace, love, and joy possible for every person in every nation. Encourage us to do our part to bring goodwill and peace to our families, our church, our neighborhoods, and the world. Now let your spirit put us in touch with you, the living God, through the words and music we hear tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Each week as we gather, we offer God a prayer of confession, talking about the ways we have failed, up to we've failed to live up to God's high call for us. This night is no different. We confront the sin that is within us, and we offer ourselves to God that we might be forgiven and transformed. By Jesus, the baby born this night, who grew to become our Lord. Let us pray. God of the commonplace, we confess that we have been impressed by power and authority. We do not expect to meet you in the poor of the land, in cold barns, or on lonely duty watches. We are slow to hear the angels or to embrace the good news of great joy. We hesitate to leave our chosen tasks to share in your larger purposes. We settle for idols of material security, even as you thrust us into the battles of life, where we have nothing on which to rely other than our faith in you. Forgive our lack of trust. Renew us in the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Dear ones, even as we confess our sin God responds, offering us the gift of grace, the same grace that was poured out at a manger where Jesus was laid on that night so long ago, the same grace 
that has touched our lives across the ages is with us now, granting us strength and courage, granting us the hope that we need, granting us forgiveness and newness of life. Thanks be to God. Amen. For as long as I've been a pastor, one of my very favorite things has been Christmas Eve with the children, having them come up and reading a storybook together. This year, once again, we aren't able to be together on Christmas Eve, but I have a story that I'm going to read you. And this story is a story about Jesus, but it isn't a story from the Bible. It's an old folk tale that tells the story about why it is that in some countries there's a tradition of having a special Christmas tree ornament that is a cobweb that hangs on the Christmas tree. And so tonight's story is The Cobweb Curtain by Jenny Koralik and Pauline Baines. It was cold on the night that the Christ child was born, cold in the stable, cold in the streets, cold in the hills. Mary, his mother, wrapped him up well, and Joseph, his father, laid him in the manger full of sweet hay. The ox and the ass stood back a little. They felt large and clumsy next to the baby, but it was their furry bodies and their steamy breath that kept the Christ child warm. By the light of a great star, three shepherds came to see the Christ child. They did not have any presents because they were poor. Led by the same great star, three wise men journeyed from far countries to see the Christ child. They brought him gold, rare herbs, and perfumes. Not much use, though, thought the shepherds, to anyone on a cold winter's night. Then the shepherds left. Of course, they told everybody they met about the Christ child. And of course, more people came to the stable to look into the manger. Then they went out and told others to come and see what they had seen. The three wise men went away too, but at the gate of the city, a messenger stopped them. Why have you come to the city of our king? He asked. And why did you bow down before a baby? Is he a king? No, agreed the wise men. Not a king as we know a king, said one. He is the Christ child, said another. Sent from God, said the third. Oh, really? said the messenger. Where does he dwell, this special child? I'm sure my king would like to bow down before him too. The city's not so big, said the wise men. Your king will find the Christ child soon enough. And they rode home swiftly and secretly by little-known paths. The youngest shepherd had heard all that was said. Now he saw the messenger hurrying to the palace. Suddenly he was afraid for the Christ child. He crept back to the stable. Come, he whispered to Mary and Joseph. Come with me. The child is in great danger. You must hide. Follow me and I will show you a safe place outside the city. It will be very cold and very dark, but in the morning I will bring you a donkey. Then you can ride away quickly to Egypt. Mary snatched up the child and Joseph took her hand. They followed the shepherd down narrow streets and away from the city. He led them up into the hills to a deep dark cave and left them there. Do not talk, he said. Do not light a fire. At sunrise, I will come back. Mary held the Christ child close and Joseph put his arm around both of them. Comforted, they fell asleep. In a crack in the rock, at the opening of the cave, lived a spider. She heard what the shepherd said, and when he left her, she watched the mother, the father, the child. The night was very cold. Frost was on the way, and perhaps snow, too. Poor things, said the spider. What have they done to be afraid and hiding on such a night? I cannot weave a blanket. I cannot build a door. But I could spin a good, strong web to keep them warm. The spider began to spin as fast as she could. 
She spun and she spun till she had spread a great web right across the opening of the cave. Then the cruel frost came and froze the web so that it glittered in the cold moonlight. The spider hid in her crack in the rock. At dawn, the king's soldiers came, clattering up the hillside. What's the matter with our king? grumbled one of them, sending us out on a wild chase after some poor baby. The spider trembled in her crack in the rock. The soldiers had stopped outside the cave. It's not a poor baby, said one of the soldiers. Our king thinks this child will grow up to be king more powerful than he is. Well, there's no one in there for sure, said another soldier. How do you know without going in? asked his companion, his voice heavy with sleep. Can't you see that great spider's web all frosted and unbroken? jeered the first soldier. It's perfect, frozen solid as a diamond. No, no one's been in there for many days. And they rode away to another hill, far off beyond the river. At sunrise, the shepherd came back, leading a donkey. When he saw the soldier's footprints, he was afraid. Then he saw the spider's web, how it hung like a curtain across the opening of a cave. He unfastened it very, very carefully and laid it on a small, dark tree. Oh, spider, he whispered, wherever you are hiding, can you hear me? This web is precious, even more precious than gold or herbs or perfumes. With it, you have saved the Christ child's life. The Christ child, said the spider in the crack in the rock. So he has come at last, and for that I am glad. But had I saved the life of any child, I would still be happy. The shepherd went into the cave and led Mary and Joseph out into the light. He gave them bread and milk. Joseph lifted Mary onto the donkey the Christ child in her arms. They thanked the shepherd in quiet voices for keeping them from harm. As they passed the small dark tree, Mary saw the spider's web. Look, Joseph, she said. Look at that curtain of cobweb, how it sparkles in the sun's early light. Yes, said Joseph. And all the work of one small creature they rode on toward Egypt, and the shepherd stood and watched them until they were out of sight. Then he dug up the small dark tree and took it home to show to his wife and children. That is lovely, said his wife. Put it by the door. Is the Christ child safe? Yes, said the shepherd, thanks to the spider who spun this web. Together, the shepherd and his family sat down by the small tree. When he had told them the whole story, his children said, Well then, every year on this day we must find a frosty web and hang it on a little tree to remind us of the Christ child's birthday and of what the spider did. On Christmas Eve, look at the tinsel threaded across your own dark tree. If you turn out the lights and half close your eyes, perhaps you will glimpse the web that on that night long ago Save the Christ child's life. Like the spider that couldn't have had any idea what she was doing when she started spinning that web, couldn't have had any idea who she was protecting. We do little things in our lives we help take care of others. And when we do that, we find that we are taking care of the Christ child as well. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the little things that we can do that help other people. We thank you that by helping others, we help Jesus. And we ask that you would help us always keep our eyes open for ways we can help. Amen. Our first scripture reading tonight is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. 
They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The second scripture reading for tonight is from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Would you pray with me? Speak to us, O God that on this night of celebration, our joy might be boundless. Speak to us, call us to faithfulness as we follow the Christ child. Amen. We've made it this far. It's Christmas. Yay. Merry Christmas to all of you. I'm glad that you're here virtually tonight. I know that we had been hoping to be in our sanctuary tonight, but over the last two weeks, even over the last three or four days, I've been watching as other congregations have been pivoting, moving from in-person services to online services, realizing that it's more important to care for one another than it is to do things the way we've always done them. And so tonight we're virtual, as we have been for several weeks. Our sister churches, many of them are also meeting virtually, remembering last year's challenges, praying that next year will be different. That's really what we're always called to do, to look backwards, to be present, and to look forwards. For the prophet Isaiah, that was what he was doing as he was speaking to a people who were living in captivity, looking backwards and remembering how things had once been. When the people had lived in the land of Israel before they'd been carried off in chains to live in Babylon, he was looking at the present at the situation in which they lived and the realities 
that they faced day in, day out, of living as captives. And he looked forward to the day when God would once more lead the people in a path of freedom, returning them to their homeland and helping them by establishing a just ruler over them. Past, present, future. For Isaiah, those words of the future, those words of hope, spoke of the one who would be to come, the one who is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We as Christians hear in those words a promise of Jesus. His original hearers, of course, would have heard the, the titles that the King of Israel traditionally used. Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, Mighty God and Prince of Peace because of that understanding that the monarchy was a gift of God. The understanding that the king was king because God had laid a holy hand on their head and had blessed them. Of course, what was true is true again. As Christians, we read these as Jesus texts, as promises of the coming Messiah. And on this Christmas Eve, as we celebrate Jesus' birth, they echo in our ears, and we probably even hear the music of Handel as people have sung that across the centuries. And then we turn to Luke, to that pastoral gospel. Pastoral, not in the sense of, of people who are clergy, but in the sense of people who are pasturing their sheep. We find this good news being shared with them by angels. And how surprising is that? That the news about the birth of the child of God would be shared not in Herod's palace, but among those doing some of the lowliest work, being shared among those shepherds in the field, huddled up against the cold, looking after the sheep, making sure that they didn't get into too much trouble. The gospel, particularly Luke's gospel, is always a reminder to us that God tends to favor the underdogs. It's a gospel in which widows and orphans and immigrants and yes, even shepherds end up being among the favored ones. It's the one in which Mary sings the song about how God has blessed her with a promise for a future. How God has lifted up the lowly and brought down the haughty from their places. Tonight we celebrate the birth of a baby some 2,000 years ago. A baby whose parents couldn't afford an inn couldn't find one, not for love nor money. And so he was born in a stable, wrapped in bands of cloth and laid in a manger. And some 2,000 years later, we still tell that story of how God broke into the world on that Christmas Eve so long ago, and how we, following that baby, have made Christ not just a seasonal celebration, but the center of our lives. Tonight, as we celebrate God's goodness breaking into the world and transforming it, giving some preference to the poor, to the needy, to the ones who are downtrodden, we follow. We follow by living as Jesus lived by living out that same preferential love for others. Dear ones, tonight as we celebrate Christmas, may we be blessed with a reminder of all that this means and with the gift of strength and vision to live out the gift of Jesus throughout the year. Amen. Thank you.
Holy God, we give you thanks for this Christmas night, for this time when we celebrate the birth of Jesus, for this time that we celebrate how you share that good news with a bunch of shepherds who were busy tending their flocks. Help us to live as children who follow that baby as he grows, as he follows you in faith on his way to the Jordan to be baptized by John, as he goes forth teaching and healing. Help us to follow him, even when we see that the way of justice and peace leads towards the cross and help us to follow all the way to resurrection. Bless us this night as we take the first steps of that journey. Help us do your work in the world. For we ask it as your children and in the holy name of Jesus, our brother, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven, heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders, wonders of His Love. Dear friends, our celebration is just begun. Our service comes to a close, but we continue to sing these songs. We'll be back on Sunday singing them some more. We will continue to sing with the songs of our hearts as we go through the year. Let us then go from this time of worship into lives of service. As we go, let us go celebrating the good news of a baby born into a manger, of God with us, Emmanuel. Let us go forth then as God's people in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the love of God, and the power and the community of the Holy Spirit who is indeed with us now and forever. Amen and Merry Christmas. Thank you.